Hi, my name is Lillian Knight, student number N971409. And today I will be discussing interprofessional communication for my CSB 346 capstone assessment. It's something we as paramedics and healthcare professionals use every day, many times a day, and it greatly affects our patients' pathway through the healthcare system and their outcomes. Interprofessional communication is the collaborative, cooperative, and transparent communication that occurs not only between various health professionals, but also between health professionals and patients, health professionals and family, and health professionals and other emergency services. Throughout this research, I have noticed that many papers highlight the importance of good communication, the barriers we face as paramedics, and how we've been falling short. I've decided to focus on this topic as I believe that honing my interprofessional communication will greatly improve my practice in enabling patient safety and positive patient outcomes. During my current clinical placement, I have noted that my interprofessional communication at this stage in my career is something that requires active thought, preparation and practice. Effective, high-quality interprofessional communication should be collaborative between the required health professionals, cooperative and open and transparent, ensuring clear and unbiased communication of information. High-quality communication will not only enable patient safety, but also reduce the risk of clinical mistakes and increase patient satisfaction. Furthermore, Constructive communication fosters positive relationships between health professionals that make up the emergency department and the hospital at large, and consequently is linked with job satisfaction. As I have mentioned, interprofessional communication is something that is required in most aspects of healthcare, but today I will be, hand I will be focusing on the clinical handover of a patient from pre-hospital paramedics to the hospital staff. The primary function and definition of a clinical handover is the exchange of information and the exchange of responsibility and accountability for some, if not all, aspects of the patient from one professional group, ask paramedics, to another professional group. By understanding the factors that contribute to this high quality clinical handover, we as paramedics can develop our skills accordingly. The barriers that are hindering interprofessional communication need to be addressed to effectively meet the goals that we have just identified. There are many barriers that negatively affect interprofessional communication, including emergency department environment, interruptions of clinical handover, poor clinical handover structure, poor professional relationships, and different communication techniques and requirements used by the members of a multidisciplinary team. The list goes on. We as practitioners have the ability to minimize some of these barriers, while others, such as the emergency room environment, we have a little say over. The emergency environment is often a chaotic, fast-paced, loud environment, with most of the paramedic clinical handovers occurring in this emergency department environment, our clinical handover skills need to be honed to overcome these aspects that we cannot change. The barrier and area of improvement that I have identified in literature and throughout my practical experience is the lack of the structure or systematic approach to a handover. This lack of direction can lead to confusion for the receiving staff and result in information being lost or not handed over from the pre-hospital treating team. Confusion about primary concern, signs and symptoms, and treatment increases a patient's risk of being inappropriately diagnosed and therefore inappropriately treated. Students spend much time practicing our handovers. 
trying to hone our clinical communication and hence trying to minimise these negative consequences that come with inappropriate hand types. There are many structures and guidelines that outline that have been devised in order to encourage succinct handovers and the advocacy of our patients. For example, I Miss Amber, which sets out a step-by-step -step structure and helps to systematically outline the patient and their presenting problem. I have found I Miss Amber a mnemonic outlining everything from identification to signs and symptoms to treatment which also encompasses health history questions to be particularly helpful during triage and bedside handouts. Both situations that I can find can be stressful and nerve wracking. This anxiety is further confounded when handing over a high acuity patient to a resuscitative healthcare team, which encompasses a multidisciplinary healthcare professional team. Having implemented IMIS AMBO throughout my degree, I have found that it is slowly becoming second nature during a handover. However, I, am, however, I still find it very helpful to practice my handovers with my mentors prior to arriving at the hospital for complex high acuity cases. I even find drafting an IMIS AMBO ham, handover very helpful in limiting the risk of missing vital information. Another communication barrier that has been identified is the differing of communication techniques and the differing information, tests, and etc. that is expected from specific health professionals. Barriers between health professionals can stem from a different terminology, role perception, and different hierarchies. Although we May not be able to change role perception, being able to identify and understand the dynamics of the receiving medical team, we can focus and em emphasize information specific to the required health professional. By meeting the demands of each health professional during a patient handoff, it orientates staff to their specific roles. Furthermore, it reaffirms that professional relationship increasing staff morale and in hand improving health professionals communication with one another enabling patient safety. A third barrier that I have identified during the research into interprofessional communication is the balance between prompting and inquisitive questioning and unnecessary interruptions during a handover. A consequence to the chaotic environment is that is most emergency departments, is the interruptions, distractions, and interferences of both triage and bedside handovers. In some respects, we can greatly minimize the negative interruptions while also encouraging positive prompting questions by the receiving staff. This positive prompting question encourage continuity of care. Prompting and some care questioning is beneficial to the patient and encourages bi-directional communication, encouraging the continuity of care and advocating the prioritization of care and a collaborative goal oriented plan to be established. Meanwhile, interruptions can evolve from un Meanwhile, interruptions involving from unnecessary questioning interruptions from other health professionals or distraction should be managed and minimized as they increase the risk of confusion, limit the systematic handover approach that we've just discussed and identified as a positive communication tool. As a novice clinician, I have found that interruptions during my handover commonly disrupt my train of thought. I have often found that the quality of my handover decreases if my train of thought has been interrupted. I have been improving my ability to be adaptable and flexible and have, had, and have found this comes with confidence, preparation of a handover and experience. Other areas of interprofessional communication that directly affect us as paramedics include that clinical documentation, an area of communication 
that furthermore advocates for the continuity of care in the form of a mandatory legal document. The idea of this documentation is so information from the pre-hospital setting is readily available to all the treating team, even after the paramedics have left. Having had to identify and reflect on the barriers that affect interpersonal, interprofessional communication, and more specifically, having focused on the triage and bedside clinical handover, I have come to really appreciate how helpful and vital high quality and effective communication is to our, pa our patient's pathway to the health healthcare system. Having had this assessment during my final placement, I found it to be extra beneficial as it allows me to actively implement these learnings into my practice. Thank you for watching and listening to this presentation about inter interprofessional communication within my paramedical practice.